Remember that Kaduna has been the den for kidnappers and they've actually done a lot of terrible things in Kaduna in the past few months. And, uh, you know, it was two different schools, colleges that were, uh, that the students were actually kidnapped. And, you know, there have been uh, so many talks about Kaduna. And even remember that the governor of Kaduna State, that is Nasir Erfa, said he is never going to negotiate with bandits and he is never going to uh, pay for ransom. For whoever, that even if that person has to be his family member, that he will never pay ransom to any bandits or kidnappers. And, you know, some of the students were killed, some were freed, some still in captivity, as much as uh, we're told that they've all been re released. Because we had information that 27 were released and... Uh, you know, uh, the uh, some people said it is 29. So really, we cannot tell if uh, the full number of students were actually released. And not just that, remember that the uh, private school, the private university, that the student, the Greenfield University, that the students were actually kidnapped as well. You know, it has actually destabilized a lot of things in uh Kaduna State. But of course, you know, some of the free, uh, 27 free students made a shocking revelation about what the bandits told them. Yes, remember that some of the students that were released back then, those Kangara school boys and the likes, remember they also brought information on who and uh, who is involved in all of this. But shockingly, I wonder why the government is not doing anything about it. Because the last time this student came out and they made some shocking revelation about those who are involved and what they have been doing to cause disintegration in the country. Aside, I'm not talking about those agitating for a new nation and all of that, you know, just to cause a disarray in Nigeria. But let us find out what uh, the kidnappers told the uh, freed Kaduna College students, and uh, let us see how the government is handling this. Guys, more details will come to you, but please ensure you subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell as well. All right, guys, without further ado, it says right here that the atmosphere in Cardona State is much different now following the release of all the 27 kidnapped students of the Federal College of Forestry and Marginalization, Afaka. They were freed on May 5th after protracted negotiations between government and criminals. But the experience of the students sojourning in the jungle for close to two months is one that they will never forget in a hurry, even in the whole of their lives. It was a mixed bag of sorrow, pain, and tears. Above all, it was a raw dose of man's inhumanity to man. Because according to the freed victims, the kidnappers showed them no mercy. Even though they collected millions as ransom, they denied the students good meals and also an opportunity to get a bath. They also subjected them to hard labor. But on the eve of the students' departure from the valley of the shadow of death, the, the, their captors had a rare moment of heart-to-heart -heart discussions with them. It was as if the kidnappers needed to get some guilt off their criminal chest and clear their conscience. Or perhaps it was an indirect way of begging for forgiveness without saying sorry. The freed college student during their public presentation, but in the account of one of the former captives, Pamela Ibrahim, just about when their freedom was all but confirmed, the criminals began to open up to them about their real motive for kidnapping the students. They told them it was not personal, but merely an opportunity to settle scores with the Nigerian government. They put the blame on the government for not providing the enabling environment for them to get an education and live a decent life, just like every other person. Get a job and a good house. They vowed to continue in their criminal venture until government respond to their demands. Before they released us, the kidnappers told us that they didn't have anything against us, that they kidnapped us because they needed a government to settle things with them, and that they also want to be educated like other Nigerians. They need work, they need houses. If government did not settle them, that they would not stop. They would continue to make sure the Cardinal State is not safe. They were very serious when they said that, and it made us believe 
that they mean it. Some of them are Nigerians, some are foreigners. They spoke mainly Fulani and Hausa, Pamela Ibrahim narrated. But she also made another curious revelation, which is that the criminals were not just a group made up of young men. There was an old man in the gang, she said. There was an old man. Anytime he is with us, he stopped them from harassing us. But once he is not around, they will beat us and insult us. Thankfully, their ordeal did not result in death. They all made it out alive. Recall that 39 students were kidnapped from the college hostel on the days of the abduction. College hostel on the day of abduction. Ten of them were released earlier after ransom was paid. The last set of 27 students were released after the criminal gang received 15 million naira in ransom payment. In addition, government re released one of their gang members that was in police custody awaiting prosecution. Well, this is uh, a shocking revelation, but I still believe that uh, these guys are just all out to cause confusion. When they started kidnapping in Nigeria, you know, especially the, uh, that of Ch uh, Chibok girls, it all started when they said uh, Western education is not allowed in the country, especially in the northern part of the country. So really, I don't know why it is... Uh, really so important for these guys to suddenly turn around and decide that they want to go to school. Like, that is absurd. The original fight Boko Haram started fighting in this country was that they don't want any Western education for Northerners and even Nigerians. I know people were of the, opposition, of the uh, opinion that why would you say there shouldn't be any Western education? And shockingly now, they are now telling uh, the abducted students that they are doing all of this because they were deprived education. Who deprived you education? Education is free. If your parents can afford it, you go to school. If they cannot afford it, you find a way to take yourself to school. So really, it is not enough reason for anybody to go into banditry. There are a lot of people who are out of school today, a lot of people. And if everybody decide that they will go into banditry because they were not given opportunity uh, to uh, get education, this country would have rot in a very long time ago. So it is really nobody's fault and uh, they should be meant to understand that it is nobody's fault that they are out of school or that they didn't go to school at all. They should wake up and, you know, drop the arms and face the wrath of the law. That is why the government is even saying they are not negotiating.